anything I say today is just my own personal opinion, not reflective of any of the opinions of my company. And all the financials or proje projections that I have are just solely my own projections and nothing related to my own company, like the company that I work for is projections. So this is my Tesla model here. I will be making one for Palantir once I get some more time to do so. But basically my question with this was, is Tesla overvalued or fairly valued on their car and energy business alone? So assuming they do not solve robo taxis, do not solve robots or whatever you may say, I started just with building out the revenue here from a template and Basically, what I, I forecasted was the three scenarios between uh, base bear and, and bull. And I think, just using these drivers down here, I think this is fairly conservative. And it's just through the rest of the decade, given that Tesla is expecting perhaps 50 to uh, even more than that in the next few years and probably tapering off after that percent delivery growth. I was doing something significantly less than that in the base and the bear cases, and then maybe just a little more along the way in the bull cases. But I really think there's a case to be made, given on what numbers this actually generates in terms of revenue. And then also assuming energy does well, because I think that's been a real forgotten segment of the business and something that's that's been lagging behind. And, and now that Tesla has the capital to really accelerate the growth there, I think they will. And then just assuming just something very basic in terms of their service and other. I think that is is definitely not what's driving the, the value here. If you see what that does, assuming their margins continue getting better, which is what they're expecting, and then just everything like that, you know, just put in some assumptions here, and then you bring it to the DCF. I think the it's, it's pretty clear, at least it, in terms of what I'm seeing, a nine-year DCF that Tesla is is undervalued on their car and energy business alone, which I think is not the, uh, the exactly. widely held, the widely held sentiment or consensus. Yeah, I think, and the reason for that, I think, is the reason for the divergence here. Wall Street just so heavily discounts Tesla's guidance. So Tesla mm -hmm. says we think we could do, in a best case scenario, twenty million a year. Which right. I think at this point that's going to be very hard. I think it might be a couple years beyond that. Maybe bull case twenty twenty. Uh, or sorry, sorry, 2031, uh, maybe. I think that could be good. But my growth rates here are just so low from what I think the company can actually achieve. It's just mm -hmm. ridiculous to see if you if you look at the, the Wall Street consensus, it's like 30%, 20%, like maybe, maybe they get up to 35% for one year. And then they're down to like 12%, like towards the end of the decade. It's, it's just, and, and that's exactly what's contributing to this, this difference in price target and upside. So what do you right. think about just at a high level, what Wall Street's expecting and what that generates for a price versus what Tesla's expecting, or sorry, what I'm expecting for Tesla and what that generates for a price. But also a more important question, which is how much do you discount? It, Cause it's not necessarily guidance. It's like a stretch goal. So like how much do you discount this yeah. far off target? We're going to push the company. We're going to try and get there. We're probably not going to hit it because we've had some disruptions that shift sort of the shift the area under the curve pretty substantially as they do and push it out. But my question is like, how much do you discount the 20 million by? Because that is, they're, they're building all these batteries. They're building all these factories. That is their goal is the 20 million, which is 1% of cars on the road to displace every year. So yeah. What do you think about just growth rates based on that? Because I think that's what ultimately generates and, and, and causes the value. Uh, I personally think it, like my view is that they'll hit the 20 million. Um, really? One is kind of like reasoning from history, what happened before, but also at the same time, like I'm never going to underestimate Musk. But the thing is like in 2014, 2015, they have, they set a targeted goal of 500,000 deliveries for yep. 2020. And that was going to include like growth rates in excess of 50%. To get there from where they were at the time that they published that goal and they hit it right nobody thought they were gonna hit nobody even wall street even was close to thinking that they were gonna hit it they were thinking in 2030 at the time like you know this is 2018 they were thinking like two three million delivery growth per year they're gonna hit that you know on a trailing basis in i mean they're probably gonna get like one and a half million this year and so sometime in like this first half of q3 uh, of 2023 they're gonna hit that that target of at least 2 million, which is where Wall Street was at in 2030, back then in like yeah. 2018. 
when they were forecasting yeah. out. Um, so I think they're going to hit that, but I don't invest on the 20 million. I invest, and just to answer your, your points so succinct, succinctly, do I think they're misvalued, like undervalued on the energy and car business alone? Yes. So the way I get there is to say, okay, I like to invest based on where I see is like the base case. And again, where my downside, if, if my downside is my bear case and I can still make a good amount of money, then I'm fine with that. But in the base yeah. case, I guess you can say really, I do believe pretty strongly they're going to hit the, the 20 million. So I, I kind of take more, I put a little more probability on that. But let's just say like you want to use 10 million, right? To be conservative, right? Yeah. So then we can do basic math here. Like, so you take 10 million and then you have to make the assumption and say, okay, what is their selling price per vehicle going to be in 2030? I think yeah. it's going to be like 45,000, right? I mean, today it's more like in the 51,000 ASP, right? And their whole goal is to bring it down to be like, to be cheaper. But you also have the impact like, I don't think like car prices currently are going to see a massive like scale back. Like they'll see some like drawdown based on how used the used car market is. But yeah. you also have to factor in, okay, now the average selling price for a car is like forty seven thousand uh yeah, like forty seven thousand here in the U like in the US. So if the average selling price is forty seven thousand, each year you have inflation of like Right now, saying 3% inflation is kind of like laughable, but let's just say like at a normalized rate, you're at 3% inflation per year. You know, you can easily get to in excess of 50,000 a car on an average selling price for most cars. And people still think that gas cars are going to be around in 2030. So if that's the case, that I mean, they'll still be around, but I think there will be like a fraction as a percentage of the market that they are today. Yeah. But if you're assuming a selling price on average of like 50,000 for a car and Tesla's average selling price for all their vehicles is like 45,000, they're obviously that's how they're capturing that 10, that 10 million. Now, if you want to say they're going to make 20 million, you got to lower the average selling price because now you have to appeal to a much like, bigger market. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't seem like now, like I don't know if other people have that sentiment, but I feel like there might be a shift in how they view getting to 20 million because maybe they think, okay, that's now going to be a mix of the robo taxi. 20 million plus just like actual 10 million of deliveries. I don't know how they're thinking about that, but let's just go with just 10 million non robo taxi cars at an average selling price of 45K. So, what is that on the top one? That's $450 billion, 10 times 45. Then you say, okay, today their gross margin profile, excluding credits just on the cars they sell, is 30%. This doesn't really include any scale for the 4680 sales. No, no real like structural packs at scale yet really just ramping up the newest gigafactories and each time they make their gigafactories more um, efficient so if they're achieving 30 percent margin really out of just fremont and shanghai then you take what you learn from fremont you make shanghai way better now you're going to make texas and berlin way better i think it's not out of the realm of possibility that you can say okay well let's say you have 45,000 stock rise. And by the way, this doesn't include FSD. This is just, just the car. So 45,000 selling price. And then you say you're at 450 billion in revenue. You're probably at least 40% gross margin from just a hard, the hardware business. And then you take that down to operating margin. In 20, in this last quarter, they demonstrated 19% operating margin. Ferrari, for example, is the like out of all automotive, they lead the industry in operating margin at 24% operating margin. Tesla, I think, will eventually get to 30% operating margin just on the hardware alone. Just on the hardware alone. Let me just double check where Apple is at. Apple's at a 30% operating margin. Wow. And they obviously have App Store, which is huge for them. And they also have uh, other like ancillary services that they offer, um, like Apple Care, Apple TV, like other things like that. But just like from majorly the hardware for Tesla, I think they'll get to 30% adjusted operating margin. Uh, like operating margin. You take 30% of the 450 billion, that's 135 billion. And then you say, okay, tax 20%, keep 80% of that. And then you say, well, Tesla today is at like 1.1 billion shares outstanding. Obviously the split is gonna change the numbers here, but let's just assume like we're business today. Then you say, okay, then probably we'll get to like 1.4, 1.5 billion shares in 2030. But at that time, I think they're going to start doing buybacks because they're going to have so much cash. So I assume like 1.3 billion shares outstanding in 2030. You take 1.3, you're at $83 in EPS. And this is just like 
10 million cars, just cars. Then you say, okay, what is Ferrari who has 24% operating margin with an incredibly high ROIC, if Ferrari has the highest ROIC in the entire car business, if Tesla vastly surpasses these guys, then you would say, well, what multiple does Ferrari trade at? They're at like 30 to 40 times. The automotive industry in general trades at like 10 to 20 times, but Ferrari is viewed as like as a premium automotive. So it, like it warrants that higher multiple because of things I was mentioning earlier about multiples, ROIC, margin profiles, growth rates, interest rates, obviously. But so, like take out interest rates and say those three. Ferrari trades it like 30 to 40 times. So then you say, okay, like take the minimum, like take just the midpoint of that of 30, 40 times, call it 35 times on the $83 in EPS we just calculated. Take 35 times that, you get 3,000 a share. Just that. Just That's automotive. Crazy. I didn't talk about energy. I didn't talk about FSD. I just yeah. talked about 10 million cars at 45,000 each. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's a, I've never, I've never heard it extended that far. You're very great at explaining it. I think a couple of things people would probably push back on would be, I think 10 million is, is that they're going to well surpass that a very bearish um, scenario. But I think the average selling price on 10 million would probably be a lot less than 45. But I do hear your argument in terms of inflation and what that does. So I think that that could be reasonable the more that I think about it. And then mm -hmm. Um, the other thing being, what was it? The Yeah, Ferrari. I think that's an interesting way of looking at it. I'm not sure. Do you think that that is supported at a higher valuation? Oh, you mean like the multiple? Yeah, exactly. Put, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's a good question. Uh, I don't have an answer to it. Um, but, you know, I think Ferrari sells 200,000 cars a year, somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah, so obviously it's an order of magnitude, <laughs> orders of magnitude above that. But if the multiple on the auto industry is typically at like 20 times earnings and Tesla is far and away the leader in just obviously EV, but in terms of just like margin and return on invested capital, if you're like more than double the industry and your growth rate is also higher than the rest of just the general market, then I wouldn't see any reason why you wouldn't trade it at least double the industry, which is like that 40 times. Maybe I'm wrong, but no, I mean, it sounds, yeah. I mean, put it that way. It, it does sound reasonable.